Hi everyone, Glenn from Back Wings of the Shear today. This is going to be uh, a how I video. Um, today's topic is sending live fish airport to airport. A uh, question I get asked a lot how fish are moved around the, the world, the country. Um, hopefully, today I can show you how I do this. So today's mission is to send some of this guy's babies from my place over here on the left, Lena Valley, over the big ditch to a place out north of Melbourne, a safe house, a uh, place where these fish need to be. We're going to be shipping today using a virgin cargo um, as a method and my, uh, my good mate over there has already organised that in terms of payment and booking which is great for me um, the process to ship fish has already started 36 hours ago where the fish to be sent have all been fasted uh, step number one really in terms of packing is to get a box organized um, I have a little labeler which is what I'm doing there putting a printed label on for address purposes a um, couple of things to make sure you have sorted when shipping is an absorbent medium in the bottom which a uh, humble old newspaper does um, pass the grade with virgin cargo and some of the others um, we then are required to put in what they call a tub liner a big plastic bag which effectively lines the entire tub so that uh, any potential bleeps are A caught in that bag and then B if they get through into the bottom. What I'm looking for here is this logo, top and bottom. Um, good luck trying to get a box onto toll if you don't have that on both parts of the box. I recommend and I personally like to label all my bags at the beginning of a pack. Um, You've worked out how many bags you're going to pack and by doing it at the start your hands are dry everything's easier to write and it's very important to label the bag so that the person at the other end um, just it makes it so much easier to identify fish they uh, things of similar body shape where color can wash out it can be a nightmare um, strongly recommend you label bags now getting some shipping water into these bags. Uh, I like to set these all up in advance too. Um, it just is a more streamlined process in my opinion. I'm using water from a uh, recently water changed and parameted tank um, from the top shelf in my shed which is the warmest water I can put in this bag that fish are happy with which just makes it uh, it just extends the sort of longevity of, of the shipping process. Um, the, the fish themselves that are going to be shipped have also had water changes, so it's, it's not going to be a tremendous shock, but just that extra little degree or two in the wad, um, it helps lengthen the, the process. It's not such an important thing in this case because today's order is it's only going to be about six hours in the bag, which is pretty short for an interstate thing. The amount of water in the bag is pretty important for a number of reasons. Um, usually when you've booked freight, um, they, they want to know how much that box is going to weigh and if you turn up overweight, they're going to have a hissy. Um, you want enough water to obviously cover your fish to a reasonable level, although popular to, uh, contrary to popular belief, you don't need loads of water to ship fish, it's more about the oxygen level. Um, I like to have a, an amount of water which kind of contributes to the thermal mass of the box. Like water holds heat much better than air does. So, you know, bags where the water's maybe 10 centimetres deep is about right in my opinion. Um, I add a bit of prime to each bag which just helps mop up any oxygen, um, ammonia that may, may result from um, you know, particles that 
go in with the fish or a little bit of poo if they haven't been fasted properly. Catching the fish, obviously, we want to be careful not to knock them around. Any, any, any stress going into the bag is going to be detrimental. We've, I don't pre-catch my fish. Usually I, I catch them on the day. Um, I just make sure I get all the rock work out, filters out, so that you can catch easily without chasing them to the corners. I like to send fish from the, I guess, the even size point of view. I don't necessarily put the biggest fish that I've got in or the smallest. I try and pick, in this case, eight fish that are pretty uniform. There'll be there'll be both genders in that mix, and and um, it just avoids that that big bully of a fish in a bag that can cause trouble in transit. Um, uh, it's really important if you happen to be shipping fish to Tasmania or WA to be very careful not to get anything other than fish into that bag. Um, snails and bits of plant can cause massive problems to, to the uh, recipient in um, states where fish are inspected. We cop it down here in Tassie as we're an island. Um, WA for whatever reasons very very stringent as well. So we've got our first bag of fish ready for the order today. Um, there's going to be eight different bags in total. Julie's being a rock dwelling sort of fish. Um, I like to put a bit of uh, shredded plastic in when I send fish like that and, and my burner. It, fish which um, are comfortable kind of hiding in stuff, they just travel a bit easier in a, a bag with some shred in it. It allows fish to kind of get out of each other's way. Um, we're sending eight fish today so the risk of aggression being focused on one fish is probably not massive but it still helps. Um, I'm a big believer in a good mate of mine oh, told, told me this, you, you, don't, uh, you don't want to be ever sending two cichlids in one bag, um, that's a recipe for disaster, magic number is one or anything greater than three, um, but this, this plastic method still is, is uh, it's going to give you results uh, a much greater chance of being positive. I don't use this method usually with fish that are um, mid-water species like I leptosomas or you know a lot of the haps because I, I don't feel that they're comfortable in um, in this environment with sort of flotsam and jetsam and it can possibly cause stress with them but it's uh, it's pretty rock solid for for a, a lot of the aggressive bottom dwelling sort of species. Um, big thing with with shipping obviously is the oxygen. I, I have my own oxygen cylinder there which is what I squirted into the bag. Um, that, that gives you the, the best chance of survival for long shipping. Um, you know you can you can get 48, 72 hours. I mean fish travel around the world when packed properly and it's it's not done with, with air in the bags, it's got to be oxygen. Another key part, and it's a, it's a requirement usually from the, the, the shipping companies, are the, the air freight companies such as Tile and Virgin, is that you must double bag your fish. And there's a lot of good reason for this. Um, you know, bigger fish can easily pop a, a, a dorsal fin spine through a bag. Um, those rubber bands might leak, there's all um, break, there's all sorts of reasons why double bagging is just a, a no-brainer. Um, but having said that, you've got to do it properly and in my opinion you must rubber band the inner bag and then the outer bag. Um, I've received plenty of bags of fish that were double bagged in, in that there were two bags but only rubber bands on the outside and 
that actually makes it quite hard to get a good seal because you've got all that thickness of plastic in the neck. Um, I probably will do a video one day quickly on how to tie a bag where you can see what I'm doing. I clearly didn't have my camera positioned quite right for this today. So this is the last bag, we've jumped forward in time for the magic of television, uh, we've now got eight nicely packed bags in this box, something I forgot to mention earlier is to check the height at which you fill your bags to because there's nothing worse than getting to this stage and you're running late and the bags are too tall for you to get that, that lid on, that's a rookie mistake that I'm sure we've all made at some point. Um, I'm not shipping with any heat today, once again it's only five or six hours, these guys are going to be in the box and it's, you know, it's a mild start to the day here in Tassie and it's going to be mild in Melbourne, there's, there's options for methods of getting heat into that box, I'm a big fan of the, the big bag of uh, hot water wrapped in newspaper that another great contact in the hobby to put me on to. Um, you obviously want to get this box well taped up so that there's no chance of any air leaking. Now the fun part, off to the airport. The hard work's done, we're packed, we've got plenty of time up our sleeve. Um, at this point I'd probably like to point out to those of you that might ever be approaching a breeder such as myself to buy fish from, um, just to be mindful of, of the, the cost of what you've just seen, you know, that, that polystyrene box costs money, the, the bag costs money, there's oxygen, there's um, the time spent to pack those fish, there's the pepper money in this car, there's the time taken to get out to the airport, and we're lucky down here in Tassie we're not going through toll roads, but people in Sydney and Brisbane do. There's so many costs that maybe aren't um, included in the price of that fish that you found wherever you have found and you want to buy. Um, so I guess I'm saying don't be don't be mean to whoever it is you're buying the fish from. Um, if, if they say they need 20 bucks for petrol, um, there's reason for that. It's it's um, it's all it's, it's nice to be able to breed some fish and make some money, but it's very easy for that uh, poor bugger that's doing the hard work to miss out for the sake of are you trying to get a bargain I guess the old um, on your dreaming thing anyway here we are bring in about to hand over the box and to wave them goodbye and hallelujah they got there Good luck with them, Mr. Massimo. I wish you well. Thanks for having me.